For today's algorithm, we're going to be discussing indexes and the different types of indexes that you can put on your relations. Throughout this video, we're going to be referencing the table you see on the bottom left hand side of your screen. The table has three columns. The first attribute is the ID column, that is a, the primary key of the table. The second is the title attribute, which is not null, but is also going to be unique. And lastly, the topic attribute, which is not unique and can be null. So throughout this video, this is the table we're going to be referencing. The name of this table is Sharp CS. So what are indexes? Well, indexes are a data structure that we can apply to a table in order to increase data lookup efficiency. An index is just a simple table schema with the schema search key disk address. So you're going to map a search key to a address in memory. The address in memory is going to be the block number and the offset within the block in order to find the address of the tuple you are actually looking for. So now that we know what indexes are, let's look at how we create indexes in using SQL. So the command in SQL is pretty simple. It's just create index. Then you're going to want to give the index name on then the table that you want to create the index on. And then you have an option of a list of columns. You need at least one column to make the index on, but you can have more. Now the columns that you choose here are going to dictate which kind of index you get on your table. And there are many different types of indexes. So we're going to dive right into what kind of indexes you might have created on your table. To begin, there are two basic types of indexes. There's the ordered index versus the hash index. The ordered index is an index file where the index entries are sorted in the order of the search key. On the other hand, the hash index stores the index entries and data retrieval information using a hash table. In this video, we're just going to be talking about the ordered index. So for our ordered index, we have three options to think about as the index is being created. First option is whether or not this index is going to be primary or secondary. The third op, the second option is whether or not this index is going to be dense or sparse. And the last option is whether or not this index is going to be single leveled or multi-leveled. So let's start with primary versus secondary. Primary, or as some refer to it as clustered index, is when the file is sequentially ordered. A primary index can only be created on an ordered column. So this doesn't necessarily have to be the primary key of your table. It just has to be the table, it has to be the column that the table is physically ordered on. Given that the table can only be physically ordered on one attribute or one set of attributes, you can only have one primary index per table. For these kind of tables, we're never going to need the thing called pointer buckets because all the duplicates are going to be clustered together, which means we can just do a sequential scan to find the specific one that we want in any particular search. Now, the second option here is to have a secondary index. Now, the secondary index can be created on any column or any set of columns, whether or not it's a key. And you can have as many as you want in the relation up to the number of different permutations of columns there are in the relation. Now, if the secondary index is on a primary key, then we don't need pointer buckets no matter what. However, we will need pointer buckets if there are the potential to have duplicates in the columns or the column sets that we choose. Now, what are pointer buckets? Pointer buckets are going to associate a certain value found in the attribute column with all the locations of all the tuples that that attribute column value shows up. This is obviously necessary if the column is not ordered because the same members that you are searching for could appear anywhere in that column. So that is the first option, secondary versus primary indexes. Now let's take a look at 
some examples. First example we're going to look at is a primary index on our same table, sharp CS, that we made earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the command create index primary on sharp CS. And we'll create this index on the column ID. Now we know this is going to be a primary index because we are creating it on the primary key column of our table. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So if we draw the primary index here, what you'll notice is that for each value, we associate a single pointer directly to the attribute value that it's referencing and therefore giving us the entire row that we want to search for. So this is a simple one, but on the other hand, we might have a, a, a secondary index on this table. Now, one example of a secondary index that might be created is if we created an index on topic. Now we do this by writing the command create index secondary on sharp CS. And we'll choose the column topic. So the topic column clearly has duplicates, which means we're going to need to have pointer buckets as well. So what would this index look like? Well, it'll contain each of the values that we can find in the topic column. And each value in the topic column will be associated with a pointer bucket. And inside of each pointer bucket will be references to every row in which that value can be found. Even if there's only one occurrence, that value still gets a pointer bucket in case of new insertions. So that's the first option, primary versus secondary. Now we can take a look at the second option. Our second option is dense indexes versus sparse indexes. Now a dense index is an index entry is an index where every entry appears for every search key value in the file. The dense index can only be created on a primary key column. I'm so sorry, why did I just show up? I meant sparse. Oh, okay, pause. Okay, so now that we've discussed secondary versus primary indexes, we can move on to dense versus sparse indexes. Now a dense index is an, is an index where every single entry of the column appears as a search key value in the file. A dense index must exist on a secondary in index, but on a primary index, it doesn't necessarily have to be dense, but it can be. Obviously on a secondary index, since everything is unordered, we're going to need to have one reference for every single value in the column so that we don't lose any references to any of them when we're searching through the index. What we'll notice is that in a sparse index, we don't actually have to have this constraint because we are on an ordered column. If we just have a few references, we can do a sequential scan to find the rest quite easily because we know where within certain bounds that value should appear. So a sparse index can, can be created on any primary index but never on a, on, a, on a secondary index. So again, if we want to perform a search, we're just going to find the closest value and use a sequential scan until we find the value we're actually looking for. So let's take an example, let's take a look at an example of both a dense and sparse index on the same table that we've been using up above. So here's our table that we've been using and let's first create our dark dense index. We will write the command create index dense on sharp CS. This time we're going to make this index on the column title um, because title is fully unique and unordered. So what will our 
index to look like here. Our index is going to have one of each. We're not going to write every single one out, but you'll get the point with a few. So we'll have one attribute for each member of the column. That attribute is going to point precisely to the row in which it resides. Now, on the other hand, we can take a look at a sparse index. So we'll do the command is the same. It's going to be a sparse, or we'll call it sparse, and it's going to be on the column ID. Of course, we only have one option here. Well, we actually have two options because we could also make the sparse index on ID title, but we're just going to make it on ID. So what will this index look like? Well, it's going to have just a few of the values that you can find in this table. So maybe we'll have 001 and 004 and uh, 0007. And they're gonna to point to their respective rows. So if we wanted to make a search for, example, for ID 003, we would just tr trace the pointer. We would chase the pointer of ID 0001 and then make it a sequential scan over to 002 and then 003 and find it. We could do this because, of course, the table is ordered. So we know that 0003 is going to appear between the index values of 001 and 004. Now let's say we wanted to search for 007. We would just trace the index 001, 004, and then 007. Then we chase that pointer over to its associated row. What you'll notice here is that if we didn't use this index, we would have to trace all seven of the rows or you know potentially much more if it's a much bigger table but because we cut this down to only three rows to ref represent all seven rows we now only have to make three ios before finding our row so those are the two those are the two types of indexes in terms of dense versus sparse and the last thing we have to take a look at is single level versus multi-level now this is a quick one because in reality we're always using multi-level indexes but a single level index is a single relation that holds all key disk address pairs so this is as if this is pretty much all the examples we've given so far there's just been one extra relation that just points to the relation that we are looking at just one single relation on the other hand in reality, you're usually going to use a multi-level index. Now, a multi-level index, you can think of as multiple relations that point to each other relation that points finally to the table that we're actually working on. So you're gonna have indexes on your indexes. This is one way to make search much, much faster because you're just going to scan multiple indexes because indexes can get pretty large. And this way you actually keep them pretty efficient no matter the size. Uh, Multi-level indexes are closely related to tree structures. And a comp common implementation of a multi-level index uses a B plus tree data structure. We're gonna cover that soon, so stay tuned for that video if, you want, if you're interested in learning more about that. So that's gonna wrap up our discussion on indexes. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, of course, that our B plus tree video is going to come out soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that one. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.